Hey everyone, I am back with a new interview with George Igo on his new documentary series featured on MillionStories.com, George Goes Everywhere. The documentary series is free to watch on MillionStories.com and takes us to some popular U.S. cities with a travel budget of only $100 a day. From New York to Chicago to Philly, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, George takes us off the beaten track and shows us fun ways to plan our travel as hopefully soon we will be able to get back out and see the world. This show was filmed pre-COVID so you won't notice any masks but these tips and tricks are great and will hopefully carry us into the future. While George did visit Pennsylvania, which is where I'm from, he didn't come to Pittsburgh. So of course I had to pitch him my ideas, keeping within a budget of course, of things to do in the city of Pittsburgh. I hope you enjoy this interview with George Igo and learn some tips and tricks for planning budget-friendly travel. Make sure to check out the new documentary series George Goes Everywhere on MillionStories.com. Well, George, it's so exciting to talk to you. George goes everywhere and anywhere, right? Are you excited to get back to traveling, hopefully one of these days? Oh, man, can't come soon enough. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, been been a long year, right, for everyone. Really? Yes, and I should have said, I'm Monica. I have a blog called popcornerreviews.com and kind of review some entertainment content on my site. So I've watched a, a ton of, of the documentary series on millionstories.com, and it was Yours was really fun to watch as I love to travel, I miss traveling, so it kind of is putting that bug back in my system, I think. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm, I'm glad I could do that for you. <laughs> I am from the Pittsburgh area, so I know you didn't tour my city, but you did tour Philadelphia, which is one of the upcoming episodes, so I was excited to see that. Um, I was just curious, you know, I was watching these episodes, what's your process for researching a city that you're going to? Because you really avoid some of the major touristy traps, if you will, you know, no, none of the kind of default things that I think a lot of us gravitate towards. How do you find those hidden gems? Um, well, I think it comes down to uh, doing, putting in the research, basically. Uh, looking deeper than the first page of Google results or the first Absolutely. page of uh, TripAdvisor uh, mm -hmm. results. And, you know, some of the stuff, I mean, I don't want to completely discount some of the touristy stuff because I do do some of those things and some of those things are a lot of fun, but some of those are can also not be so much fun and overpriced. And so uh, try to dig a little deeper, do uh, more research and and find those hidden gems and find the fun things that uh, maybe not everyone has heard of. Mm -hmm. I, when I am going to a city, it is intimidating to me because I, yeah, I don't want to just hit the top tier items. I don't want to miss anything. You know, you go and you say, oh, I just went so-and-so. And they ask you, did you see this? And your response is, no, I didn't even know that was a thing. And it's like, you feel like you missed out on part of the city and the experience. Yeah. But one of the things I like to, uh, when I'm looking at a place uh, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, one of the rough guidelines I use is, would this be a fun place to go on like a second or third date? Mm. If, you're, if you're going out something like, is it kind of quirky, kind of, you know, silly? And uh, would it be, you know, give you, you know, something to talk about with someone who you're still kind of getting to know? Uh, I think that's been a uh, pretty good guideline for me in making the series. A good icebreaker almost. I mean, yeah. I, I'm trying to remember what it was called. I can only imagine going on a first, second date in, I think it was, oh gosh, I'm blanking now on my notes. Oh, Nashville. And you did the George Demirian foam fighting. Is that how you say it? I, I believe that is how you pronounce it. Yeah. I mean, that would be a pretty good first, second date. At least as a Lord of the Rings fan, I think I would enjoy it. So <laughs> I think so. I mean, if you're, uh, yeah, it, go, going to, it, I mean, that place was just bonkers. I mean, and everyone was great and they were very welcoming to us. I mean, I think that'd be a lot of fun on a second or third date, actually. Mm -hmm. So food is a big part of travel for a lot of people, for me too, and a, a great way to experience culture and everything. Uh, for Philadelphia, you know, cheesesteaks come right to mind, but you deviated slightly from that with something I didn't even know existed. I mean, how did you find out about that hidden gem of something that you had to make yourself, I think? <laughs> I had to make it myself the, the Philly taco, which is a, uh, a cheesesteak 
wrapped in a slice of pizza. Yeah. Uh, and it is as amazing as it sounds. It is better than the sum of its parts, I think. And uh, where did I find that? I think I might have found that on like, um, maybe like a Philadelphia message board or something, like a, a Reddit or something like that. I don't remember specifically, but uh, it was, again, it was one of those things where it's not on the, the first page or, or two of Google results. It was a little deeper, but once I found it, I started researching that specifically. I found, you know, plenty on it. It has its own Wikipedia page. And uh, yeah, and for good reason, because it was, it was awesome, I felt. <laughs> Maybe they'll start bringing it back now as a, you know, one of those items, it's not on the menu, but you can order, you know? Like a, like a secret menu item, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so with your travel too, the whole objective was keep it under $100. You came close a couple times of, you know, going right over New York City, I think. But some of the times I, you spent $50, $40, and I couldn't even believe that's how low your spending was for the day. I mean, that's a challenge in itself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, a challenge, but I mean, I think you can do it in really any city. I mean, like you said, New York, New York was trickier. Um, uh, Chicago is also a little tricky. Um, but, you know, those are some more expensive cities that I visited, but other cities, I think you can do do this uh, if you are creative and kind of put some uh, effort in beforehand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And transportation, I feel like was a unique thing too. I saw you biked a little bit. I think you took the subway. Do you have any tips for that? Because that can always be intimidating too. You don't wanna be confined to your car if you drove there. I mean, how do you approach transportation on these trips? I mean, I, am a, I, I like public transportation personally. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it, not just for the, the money reasons, but I think it gives you a better feel for the geography of the city. Um, it kind of gets you, uh, when you're in a car, you're just, you, you get on highways and you kind of don't necessarily, you're not oriented necessarily because you, all you see is the highway. But when you're on uh, a subway public transportation, you kind of get a feel for where things are in a, in a city. And uh, I like it for that reason. And I mean, I know a lot of people are a little, intimidated by a, a, a subway system in a city they don't know. But I, I say lean into it. I mean, don't be afraid to get on the wrong train. It's, it's okay. Like, you, you might go in the wrong direction. I've gone in the wrong direction many times on, and it's fine. You get off and then you get on the other way and it's okay. And look at the map and just take five minutes to figure it out. I mean, if you give yourself a little bit of time, I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You definitely see the city in a different vantage point, like you said, like they're the roadways through the city or the subway versus you miss a lot of things in the car or you get distracted, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're in the back of an Uber, I mean, and not to say I never take Ubers, of course, but, you know, you're in the back of a car, you know, you're, you're on your phone and just it's, you can get sort of that kind of tunnel vision of just one location, then you're in another location, you don't have the, the geography of the city kind of in your head. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a little bit different. I don't think I would want to do this necessarily on a trip that I'd be traveling to, but I ran a half marathon just once. Can't say that I'll do it again, but it was in Pittsburgh, the city where I live, and I saw the city from a completely different vantage point. So I feel like that would also be an opportunity if you if you enjoyed running and you wanted to have that be your vacation or whatnot, it, a different way to see the city for sure. Yeah, that's true. I have uh, friends who are, I'm not a runner. Um, <laughs> I, I no desire to run a marathon or even a half marathon, but yeah, I have friends who are big uh, runners, and they, they say the exact same thing. They they love doing races in in different locations. A friend of mine who'll go to a, a city just to run the marathon there, and right? It's sort of his way of of exploring a city. Mm -hmm. I'm also a huge movie fan, so even if I go to kind of a town I always like to google like what films were made here what kind of scenes and shots can I try to pick out and I saw you do that a couple times too whether they were still around or not so the forest uh forest gump bench which is no longer there <laughs> which is a really fun fact the yeah. rocky steps and I have to know did you run up them or did you just take a look at them you know you I, gotta do that uh, recreation of the scene no I didn't do that um you know that felt um I mean, I, we did a quick thing there. It was just, you know, a few seconds, uh, right. kind of a quick joke. 
there in the Philly episode. Um, but that felt a little, it's been done, I think. Uh, I, I, I felt like people have seen that before. They mm -hmm. can uh, find some, some content like that in mm -hmm. any number of places. And uh, I wanted to try to do something different. Absolutely. Well, yeah, millionstories.com and the Singleton Foundation certainly are putting out a lot of terrific content, educational, interesting. How did you get involved with them and how did you help to kind of come up with this concept for your series? Uh, well, I got into, I have been making content on my personal YouTube channel for years now. Um, and what I've been, I used to work in television, um, I still do, uh, but I was um, a writer for a TV show and um, an old, he, uh, an old uh, co-worker there uh, was friends with someone at the Singleton Foundation and they said to him, hey, do you know uh, any, any young millennial type who makes video content? And he's like, as a matter of fact, I do. And um, it's, you know, story, you know, oldest time, how'd you get this job? A friend recommended me. And um, so he recommended me we, and so we kind of started chatting and they saw some of my content on my YouTube channel. And they're like, oh, okay, you might be the, uh, the guy for this job. And um, yeah, we just started thinking of how to make a show, Traveling on the Cheap, which is something I'd already done on my channel. And um, yeah, we just kind of went from there. And so we figured George Goes Everywhere is kind of one of the more entertainment focused uh, shows. And mm -hmm. so, you know, kind of bring people into the channel mm -hmm. with the entertainment and then sort of, uh, try to teach them about financial literacy once they're there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Where, where are you planning to go next once you're traveling again? I mean, it's hard to really make uh, too many plans these days. There's so much uncertainty, but um, I mean, I'd love to keep making more of, of these episodes. I mean, there's a lot of West Coast cities that I did not hit. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard great things about Pittsburgh actually. That's what I was going to say. I have recommendations for you if you ever get there. I didn't know if you'd been there yet because I think I read you're from New Jersey originally. I am. I've been to Pittsburgh. I, I went there for a Pirates game once because I, I, uh, I'm a big baseball fan. I go to as many baseball parks as I can. But I was in Pittsburgh for probably only about maybe eight hours. Okay. Just I, I literally flew in, went to the game, then flew out. And it was a long day. But um, yeah, but I've heard great things about Pittsburgh. Okay, so here's my pitch. Are you ready? I try to keep it in price reasonable items. Didn't price them out, so I can't say for sure that we're going to stay under $100. But we're going to go downtown, obviously. Downtown, I should say, because we're going to be Pittsburghies, okay? Uh, the three rivers obviously are converging there. So a great way to see the city is to do a little bit of a kayak tour. You can get a view from the river, which is really fun. Uh, Pittsburgh Incline is a nice way to ride up the hillsides of the city and get a great vantage point from Mount Washington. And then of course we're gonna be hungry. So you have got to get a Primanti Brothers sandwich. I'm not sure if you've heard of that one. They have them at PNC Park, I think. They have one at PNC Park, yes. So it's that famous uh, Mancini's bread with the deli meat and the coleslaw and the French fries all on top of one huge sandwich. So that's our local fare, I would say. I was going to, for the culture route, uh, recommend the Andy Warhol Mac Museum, but after watching a couple of your episodes, I felt like that was too mainstream. So I'm going to recommend one that I personally haven't been to yet that's on my list. It's called Randy Land, and it is an outdoor art museum with bright, colorful, funky things on like the north side. So it's still on my list. I have to check it out, but that would be my recommendations for your $100 day. Okay, that's good to know. Randy Land. Randy Land, I'm pitching Pittsburgh, yep. Uh, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. plenty of Midwest places I did not hit, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, your, your series was a lot of fun to watch. I'm excited to see some of the new episodes that are coming out. I think so far I saw New York, Savannah, I got a sneak peek at Pittsburgh, or not Pittsburgh, Philly, um, Nashville, which Nashville really surprised me because I think everyone thinks of Nashville as a pricey place to visit. And that was one of your lower end uh, budget trips, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, people, it's kind of a party town uh, these mm -hmm. days. Nash Vegas is kind of what, what people call it. Right. Uh, but yeah, still a lot of, a lot of fun stuff there. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Budget. 
So now, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the days where we can get back out there safely and see some of these things and also to yeah, take the kind of road less traveled approach, do some research, like you said, you know, maybe I'll need to pick up a tour guide book like I used to versus hitting the first page of Google, which, <laughs> you know, you get the same results there. So really excited. But thank you for chatting with me, George. And thank you so much for sharing your tips and tricks and going to all these cities so we can live vicariously through you right now, too. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure.